This episode is brought to you by Coors Banquet. Holy crap. No, 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 thank you. Straight just air up. Cheers. What's up, Chris? I'm yeah. psyched to be here. Literally in my backyard. Yeah, this is epic. Having us. Yeah, I, this I don't is great. get to uh I don't get to have hangouts back here ever. We're here for, you. for it. You know? I know, it's yeah. not bad. The wind died down, it's a beautiful night, it's not freezing. Yeah, yeah. lucky. Only we got, mountain bikes. We got the alpacas here. I mean, yeah. <laughs> the lady at the pizza store was like, Are you guys uh, having a bachelor party? And I was like, Pretty much. You know, <laughs> <laughs> just gonna hang out and have some beers. She tried inviting herself over. Yeah, yeah. It's kinda <laughs> sick, yeah. Chris? Tell the audience what you do for a living. Shoot, um, man, I've worn a lot of hats. Um, I think that nowadays, you know, it's more about trying to just get my hands on fun projects to, to work on. And whether that takes the form of like, you know, directing film or shooting, a, you know, branded content or a catalog or something like that, or just kind of doing an expedition myself as more in the athlete position, it's, uh, it oscillates, you know, like it, that's what's, I think so cool about right now, like this time of life is like, there was a moment where all I could identify with is like being a photographer. And it was like the camera was the only way to experience the world. And it felt really, really fulfilling, but super limiting at a, at a moment. You're kind of like, well, this is the only thing I got. Yeah. Now, you know, it's like being a barista and all you know how to do is make a cappuccino. It's like, you're not, For sure. you know, it kind of gets boring. So now it's rad. Cause I, I, again, I wear a lot of hats and I get a chance to like explore, um, a lot of different facets of the world and I've shot um, you know climbing and surfing and and, and um, basically every kind of action sport under the sun and nowadays it's more about just telling longer form stories in any way yeah. I can. How, how long so when did you get into I know you said you grew up here and you were traveling within a 20-hour drive yeah I'm assuming you're shooting photos the whole time even pre-commercial you know pre you know professional oh, look the, the girls are laying down they're just, oh, they're yeah. just chilling now <laughs> comfy Give a little kiss. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I guess what I mean more so is like in my early childhood, it was more like, you know, some people go on vacation to Europe. Yeah, you know, yeah. Some people go to Hawaii. I was like, that wasn't an option. You know, we where we would go is where we could drive to. So Big Sur and, and like, you know, even into you know, a lot in Utah and a lot in Arizona, just like that was my my sphere. So like when yeah. that's the that's the extent of your world, um, it wasn't a bad world. Like it was pretty sick like yeah, i feel like the, the diversity in the west is just it's yeah. incredible so when i started when i picked up a camera it wasn't because i wanted to be creative or i wanted to be some like action sports photographer or adventure whatever you want to call it like that wasn't even on the radar i didn't even care about that all i cared about was simply not being a laborer for my life because that's like what i did through high school i worked on cars and i mowed lawns and all that and that was hard blue collar work that i that built who i was and i respected it's a good good little uh, I know, smoke smokeless out. fire um that's <laughs> but, just karma right there <laughs> <laughs> but like so when i picked up a camera it was purely like i just want to see what's out there i just want to see the world and that that was it it wasn't the creativity and all that like the desire to you know tell stories it was i, I mean just straightforward it was like purely selfish like i just wanted to get out of the small town and see what was out there and i mean to better my my personal situation, but also just to expand my horizon of what the world was like. It gets yeah. kind of, you know, frustrating when it's like all you know of the world is like the six o'clock so, news and yeah. like the dinner table conversations. You're like, there's got to be more out there. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I saw a camera like I look at a hammer, like it was a tool yeah. and it had a job and maybe, maybe it could take me somewhere. And then all of a sudden it evolved into like, wow, this is like a pretty sick tool like you can do some stuff you know you can tell a story so when did it switch from i mean one you could have picked anything you picked a camera which is interesting yeah right where you're saying you you wanted to find something that could take you out there why was it the camera and not writing i don't know writing yeah so could... writing or writing both <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah you know that's a good question i think um like early on uh you know through high school Again, all I was thinking of was like work. Like, what am I gonna do for work? Gotta find it. Gotta figure out a career. Gotta find a job. Gotta do something. You know, whatever. And my sort of respite from the chaos of high school and all that was like going up the coast with my friends and mm -hmm. surfing or 
bodyboarding or whatever. It was like, you know, jumping fences and, you know, Big Sur and like trying to go find some wave and, yeah. you know, getting scared and, you know, surfing till dark and, you know, thinking you're seeing a shark, things like that. And so I think it in that group of guys growing up as a youth without like without a, a father figure in my life, it was kind of like there was this this gang mentality and I fit into this group, this this group of dudes. What did y'all pack? What was that big? <laughs> um, she's calling BS on what I'm saying. But um, so it was like it was like I, I fit into this weird little clique and it was like my role kind of became documentarian, right? Like I was just like picking up cheap film, used film from the Rite Aid down the street drop it off at the end of like the weekend and like have some, you know, I don't know. It was, it was, it was purely just for fun. Like yeah, that was it. Yeah. And I literally, my wife, now my wife at the time was just my girlfriend, high school, borrowed her mom's camera. Hmm. It was an old yeah. like Canon had like a hippie strap on it film. And I was like, this is rad. Like I just kind of enjoyed having that with me. Mm -hmm. you know? still shooting film a lot? Um, nowadays I, I shoot a little bit of film. I mean, and it's it's purely for personal use. Yeah. Like, I still have the medium format camera. I still have my large format camera. In my beginning of my career, I did start shooting film, and I. It's funny because like there's so much romance around it, but dude, it is so challenging yeah. to like build a career around that. And yeah. I think it's funny because I've I've tried to think about it for years. Like, there was a number of years where film just really bothered me. Like, it, like it just bugged me. Like, even like the purists who were like, oh, I only shoot film. Um, and I think for me, the reason was because I, I did shoot it in the beginning. And when, when I was scraping by and like trying to just make a living as a photographer, it just felt like uh, impossible to be creative. Like, uh, you know, every single time you're buying a roll of film and then you're, you're going to pay for it to get made, you're like, I'm, I'm looking at like my, my bank account, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I couldn't, I didn't have that flexibility, that freedom just to go shoot, you know? Like to become proficient, you need to put in those 10,000 hours and like, when you want to go experiment, you want to go shoot long shutter, you want to go shoot at night, you want to go just like play with the camera. Like it felt like a limiting. And I think that um, that's why in my mind, like digital photography really opened up the world for me and a lot of other people, you know? And you, obviously now it's like everybody who's got a phone can yeah. take a killer sure. photo. Um, but there's like, I think for some people, they don't fully appreciate that. And to me, I like, I fully appreciate that after sending off like my best slides to australia to some magazine and never see him again like that's a painful process when oh, you're yeah. like you know at the impetus of your career how, how yeah. important is the actual like artistic side of it versus the business side of it because it's obviously both in order to like build this brand around yourself yeah i think i think if anything the artistic side of it is absolutely critical you need to have uh, you need to have like a vision for your work right but I think sometimes we get we get a little more caught up in the art mm -hmm. than than we should. That's just kind of my take on it. Like I think they need to go hand in hand. That's why there's the always the, the iconic classic thing, like the starving artist, the, mm -hmm. the, yeah. the you know the idiot savant, right? It's yeah. like I I know a lot of people who are way more talented than me, but they never fully unlocked the idea of how to like. Well, I got to take a risk. I got to pour money into this thing because then this thing is going to allow me to get to this place. And yeah. this, like, and I've always been more of like a, okay, if I, if I risk this and I've just never been, af I haven't really ever been afraid of risk when it comes to that. Like, I'm like, yeah, man, I'll freaking empty the bank account. I'll, I'll pay for that book. I'll yeah. pay everything I can to make that book. Will it sell? I don't know, but I'm passionate about this. And I yeah. think that people saw that passion and, and it kind of just caught on. And that's, that's really benefited me overall. Right? Did, did you ever have to like burn bridges or like, sacrifice something to to get there because like you, ha you kind of have to i've burned so many bridges <laughs> i mean inadvertently like yeah. they just get burnt like that's just yeah. what it is like you know i think that um one of the things that I've, I've been lucky enough to do is is to try to look back always and recollect and i don't and i mean that in the most literal way like i go back from a trip and i'm like making a list of like well this is all the stuff i didn't use or i didn't eat and I think that's what makes me a good expedition planner is I'm always trying to like cut the fat yeah. and I'm always, I'm always trying to evaluate and reevaluate. And I think in life, just in general, that's kind of been a part of my process is like looking back at that experience and being like, well, why did I end up there? Yeah. Like what brought me to that point? Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, okay, well it was this decision and that decision and, and in the good ones and the bad ones. And I would say like, dude, I've, I've, 
taken the unconventional path. I mean, I, my, I'm not like, you know, hawking my book here, but my latest book is called Wayward because it's literally about my journey. And it's not the path of least resistance. It's the path of most resistance. Mm. It's like figuring it out by basically making all the mistakes and learning along the way. And I, and I, I take a lot of pride in that. I think that there's something to be said for just like, yeah, you know, totally. figuring it out. Yeah. Were any of them like gnarly ones that you remember? Or were they, Dude, there's so like many. The book is that. literally full of them. But yeah, yeah, I remember like being in Chile and uh, way down in Lebu, like far southern Chile, past all the points on a trip. Like one of my first assignments for, uh, I was actually working for Surfline and, and Water Magazine at the time on staff, like had a job, had a retainer. Everything was killer. Like had the just the amount of equipment I just bought this like, like, big mega telephoto like Nikon lens at the time and um, this is a trip I had planned and like you know you just you go through this process of um, of feeling so responsible because you're like well I'm planning the trip and I'm investing the time and I'm pitching the editors and I'm, I'm getting everybody on board and it's my thing and like it's got to work out and you're like ready to basically prostrate yourself on the just to make it work you know anything and I remember we're down in this town and I had like researched all the waves and found some of these spots that I wanted to surf and shoot. We got to this village down there. It's a harbor. Swells kind of wrap around this harbor. And I, I'd seen photos and nothing I had seen did it justice. Like we got to this town and I'm like, this place is psycho. Like big swinging swell that would like wrap in and then just hit this reef. And it was like an A-frame both ways. Super offshore and, um, and kind of shifty because it would like swing around a point. And I remember being up there and there was this iconic like graveyard. I'm up there shooting photos, shooting lineups. And I was like, this is like, this, this is like, you know, when you see a photo and then all of a sudden you go to that place and you're like, dude, it's real. Like it exists. It's, mm -hmm. it's like you, yeah, you opened up this you know, treasure map. Frothing. And I was frothing. And I yeah. think sometimes <laughs> that froth, it like, it's, <laughs> I don't know. It turns to like, uh. It goes beyond froth. It's hard to relate. I don't know if you've ever seen Fantastic Mr. Fox when mm -hmm. like their eyes have X's over them and they're just like standing there. Like it's like that where you're like you're you're blinded by what you want. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to shoot that wave and I'm like, I gotta get out there, I gotta get on the boat. Right? So we're down there, we're knocking on doors at the pub, it's late at night, trying to find boat yeah. captains, like dinghy drivers who would drive us out there. And we found one. And you can imagine where we found him in the morning, same spot, met him at the pub. He takes us out there, long story I short. Think. I mean, dude, this guy was literally falling asleep on the motor, oh, no. like, like sleeping <laughs> to the point where like, I'm just focusing on shooting. I'm like, holy shit, he's, we're getting close. This is sick. Like, you know, I was there with Peter Mendia and Nate Tyler and um, so another guy, a Hawaiian guy. And I remember they're, they're just pulling in. The waves are sick. I'm super stoked. And I'm just, I'm like, dude, we're getting so close. It's insane. I'm like switching lenses because all of a sudden we're getting close to the wave. And I'm like, I look back. Oh no. And this dude's straight up oh, asleep geez. and all of a sudden the set comes in and I'm like looking at where the nose of the boat is pointed. And I'm like, holy shit, like there is no way we're gonna get this boat reoriented. Yeah. You know, it's either like yeah. you're ripping a Yui and you're going in and you're the wave is chasing you down, or you're gunning it out to sea. And it was like, no, nah, just straight into the thing. I flooded, <laughs> I flooded oh like thirty thousand dollars of the gear. It was it was Literally, I brought everything I owned. Wow. Gnarly. Like, I, I was... So you yeah. stayed in the boat. You didn't oh, I was in the boat. I mean, we, <laughs> like, we, we literally, like, went like this, impacted the front of the wave. The lip had crashed, but we were just in the white water, yeah, right? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I was like, I remember, I remember yeah, vividly, I remember vividly going like this. Like, I had, like, a 7200 in my camera, and I had another lens, and I just was like this. Oh my and gosh, I, I've only been to SeaWorld once in my life as a young kid, and I swear to you, it was like Shamu. I just... Wow. sprayed me down I was just like drenched and I remember getting back up and pouring like salt water out of my lens and I was like my career is over oh, like man. that's it like wow. there's nothing that's going to recover yeah. this yeah. situation and um it was gnarly I mean that's the adversity I will never financially, yeah. <laughs> I will never financially <laughs> recover I was and it was and I have two alpacas this is great yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> it's funny because I, I at the time it was like I, I was the only trip in my life I've left early like I left, I had no equipment. I was in the middle of nowhere, had no yeah. gear. I couldn't, I couldn't fly up to freaking, you know, central Chile, one of the major yeah. cities and buy gear and come back. It was like, we had two more days left. I was like, what am I gonna do? Just mm -hmm. went home. I was tripping. Got home, luckily had images from the rest of the trip. And it's funny, cause perspective is everything. Like that trip 
was like defining in my career. Like the day prior, two days prior, I shot this photo of Peter Mendia and he's like covered in this crazy golden barrel that happened to like explode off the rocks. And it won this like really pretty rad grant or pretty rad photo contest from Red Bull called the Red Bull Loom. And I was like super young in my career. That was from that trip, but I, I, it was like the last thing I could think about was like that we had scored this epic yeah. session and all I was thinking about was like, dude, my career's over. Yeah. Like, and you know what's funny? Because I had won that, months later, I won this photo contest. I got this insane like $20,000 kit from Leica, which I eventually oh. sold and bought more equipment. Sick. Because in the interim, like I claimed insurance and I got, and I, I had insurance luckily, and I got my gear back that I had lost, what? but I was, no, but I was uninsurable for like six years. Oh, what? Yeah, they were like, they were like, we aren't going to insure you. And I could, I could not apply for insurance. Wow. Really? Yeah. Were you like young 20s at that point? I was, I was, oh, yeah, I was like, wow. I was like 20, this was like 22 or something. And I, I remember being like, great. Like, yeah. And my job is literally to take cameras to like some of the harshest conditions, you know, salt water, yeah. you're in housing. Yeah, it was like, yeah, it was yeah. so gnarly. And, and, but I just think it's, it's ironic that like, you know, in those moments, all you're thinking about is like, dude, this is the, this is the final mistake. Like I'm, I'm never going to recover from this. And then so much good came from like that trip. Right. And, uh, and that's kind of mind blowing. Okay. Personal experience with something that you have uh, done. Um, and this is not photography. This is when I was in a surf shop, I was like actually checking out my own gear, yeah. Seeger and like, Fixing up the zone and undercover boss. Undercover boss. No way, it. really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, undercover buyer. <laughs> undercover buyer. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. It's been and, done before. And uh, you know, because I own a clothing company, I don't usually look at other like brands to buy mm -hmm. for myself. But Whoa. this one time, I was at Hanson's Surf Shop. Shout out Hanson's. Um, <laughs> I walked by the billabong section and I saw this like Sherpa lined jacket that looks so comfortable for like post or pr like yeah, yeah. pre surf. And I was like, I'm freaking down. That thing's kind of sick. And I pull it up and it just said your name fat on the label. And I was You're like, like no, no way. <laughs> I was like, no, <laughs> just threw it. No, yeah. no. <laughs> Honestly, I was like, no way. Like yeah. you're, you're making like collab products as like, yeah. So random. Right. Like I, I never really thought that would be like a thing to like, Put my name on something like that nor, nor would i think people would care you know but i guess it's kind of rad to be able to you know in some capacity design stuff that you're like why would you use this this is rad. Yeah. like um they're a brand that i like you know grew up respecting and shot a lot of photos for them over for the sure. years and then kind of like started working as an ambassador and then they were like oh, do you want to design a couple of pieces and i'm like hell yeah like let's do it so we made some stuff that's and, so crazy dude, it's, it's fun i mean like i I mean, I'm sure as you guys do, like, I love the process of like making something or like, yeah. mm. oh, there's this piece that, that doesn't exist. Like, let's make this. Like, that's so fun, you know? Like, For you sure, yeah. dream about that as kids or you're like, you know, I don't know, cut up your favorite t shirt, make it into like a muscle tee or something yeah. like that. And then all of a sudden you're like, you know, for you guys, you're properly making stuff. You yeah. Know? It's so, yeah. it's such a wild process. It's a trip. It's, it's hard yeah. to even understand, you know, sometimes yeah. you're like, Damn. you're working with vendors and then blah, blah, blah. And you're like trying, doing collabs with, with these brands. And it's like, yeah. you up the ante every time. And, yeah, and, and it's hard, you know, sometimes you're like, is the quality where you want it to be? You don't know. It takes yeah. iteration after iteration. I'm, I'm sure now you guys trip out on how, where it started oh, to where it is. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The first ones were horrible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. but, but it's, got, it's gotta be, you know? It's like, oh, yeah. 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 I mean, we had zero experience in apparel, you know? Yeah. yeah. We didn't go mm -hmm. to like... Okay, not zero. We all worked at surf yeah, shops and stuff. Surf shops, in yeah. terms creating of creating apparel. Yeah, creating yeah. apparel, yeah. which is yeah, what yeah, we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and um, you know. But yeah, it wasn't like it wasn't like you're like cool. Yeah, I've got a textiles background. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, exactly. yeah. Nobody. You're had just that. like this we didn't is have what. Sewing we, machine yeah, like, this yeah. is what we like. And oh this yeah. Is what we make, yeah. Yeah, we had to learn it the hard way in that regard, of just you know how bad something would be, and then same thing like, ah, we just invested everything in that. How do we move on to the next one? You know, and so. That that was sketchy. Now, I mean, we're we've got it pretty dialed. We got a really good team. Yeah. You know, like where do you feel like you guys draw inspiration from? Then, like, where where does someone like yourselves draw? Like, from you know, is there certain brands where you're like, yeah, I really like what they're doing. Really like what they're doing. Or is it kind of more like we're taking our own path? You know, I mean, or is it kind of just like we want to? You know, I don't know. Yeah, how like where do you guys draw inspo from? Um, I would say a lot of it's from just our own lifestyles, like mm -hmm. what we want to make. Mm -hmm. So that's like the first thing, like 
how would this feel and be like while we're on a trip mm -hmm. on a camping trip um on a fishing whatever it is surf whatever and then second we want to create styles or bring in styles maybe from like retro mm -hmm. or vintage uh looks yeah. um yeah. yeah i'd say like we look to like music and mm -hmm. um there are obviously brands but yeah. We try like we don't want to look at a brand's of course, piece yeah. of clothing and say like yeah. let's just do let's that. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah. We want to look at something from like the '60s or '70s and mm -hmm. say like, oh, that's cool. How can we make it mm -hmm. different for today? Right. And make it like essentially like modern country. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, yeah. You're elevating what you what inspires you and bringing you know modern materials to yeah. it, right? And, yeah. yeah. And, and taking it from like the old west, right. like actual mm -hmm. like old styles and right. bringing it back. And it's yeah. crazy too because we we all have different tastes and interests and stuff and that's, things that we like to do yeah it's tricky to like combine them all but it's it's beautiful because we usually come to a consensus pretty quickly mm -hmm. we're like that because we we act as like the we're the co-founders of the company we pretty much act as like the co-artistic directors mm -hmm. so we don't necessarily like sew everything mm -hmm. but we're no of course you know coming up with the like the ideas or taking other people's original ideas that are on our team and kind of like green lighting things mm -hmm. And we have come up with a system where it's like two out of three of us have to vote for something That's for right. it to go through. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. That is nice. Yeah. 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 It's, it's a, be, it's it a would fun be... like, back yeah. and forth thing. Like, yeah. Who gets voted out? <laughs> it's honestly always back and forth. That's a yeah. good question. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's pretty It's funny. Over. You'll feel like, oh, yeah, I'm like me, say, for yeah, example, like, me and Elliot are like vibing right now. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. it's like, oh, shit, you just, you you just voted like against that? it. Yeah. And, and voted me off the it's island? It's like days yeah. at a time. Yeah, yeah. But, you learn yeah. to be a little less attached to, to things. Mm. You know, the more things we make and, you know, not to have hurt feelings of like, yeah, yeah. I wanted it to be blue. And you're like, okay, well, it's red, whatever. That's not the end of the world. Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that is interesting. Like, that give and take. And uh, that collaborative spirit is, I think, what's carried me through my whole career. Like, I, I, I feel like if there's anything that I learned early on, um, I mean, I remember being like 21. I just won this like um, this grant for uh, from Surfing Magazine for in, in honor of Larry Flame Moore. He's this old surf photographer who passed away from cancer, and I like won this grant. I was so stoked, and I, I ended up making this book called The California Surf Project, and I remember having such a clear vision of what I wanted it to be. Me and my co-author at the time, good friend of mine, Eric Soderquist, we were like, this is our book, this is what it's gonna be and look like and blah, blah, and we took it into the publisher and, and they're like, okay guys, well here's the cover and here, you know, and, and they're telling us all these ideas and we're like biting our tongue, we're trying to like, yeah, we're like yeah. dying inside, we're <laughs> like, oh my God, and so, but it was funny because it was like, that was the first moment in my life where I was like, okay, you gotta adapt or die, right? Yeah. You gotta like, you got to learn to collaborate like okay well who is who is the graphic artist on this okay well let's let's talk like let, let me get to know you what do you like learn what i like let's find synergy and i definitely will say i'm you know at times i have a very like strict creative vision um and and i can like butt heads with some people but i also love the process like nothing gives me more joy it's cool to hear you guys talk about it because nothing gives me more joy than like finding people that you do collaborate well with and then like the idea gets better and yeah, better and better and you're yeah. like oh my god like what did we just make yeah, like yeah. this is way sicker than yeah, i thought and yeah. because of that person giving me that input it, it just elevated it to a level yeah. that i could have never done and i think with films i see that a ton like because you you, you iterate on like one idea and that mm -hmm. idea kind of snowballs into something much bigger or broader or cooler mm -hmm. for right. sure if an idea yeah. is shut down for us someone has to have a better idea or make it better right so it's like yeah it always keeps getting pushed further until it's ready to go mm -hmm. and we just put it out that's rad but yeah yeah it's a fun way to do it i really love that uh the board short video you guys did the standoff stand oh yeah that yeah. was amazing that was a lot that was like a couple of years ago but yeah, it, was, yeah. It, it like really left an impression in my mind <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> Sick. Is, yeah that yeah. was like old high school friends that shot that's that so too. good yeah. yeah yeah it's pretty awesome act and shot it's just like getting together a bunch of friends to create funny stuff I know, you know and, and what's funny is like that comes through and not in like a bad way in like a really good way like, yeah i'm like nobody's taking themselves too seriously 
this looks fun. Yeah. It looks like it would have been fun to be there. Right. It looks it like was. it would have been so fun gnarly. to be there. Yeah. It was oh, actually it was gnarly. gnarly. Like, we had to pay a fine. <laughs> no <laughs> no <way>. Seriously. <laughs> what? It was gnarly. What? It just got rowdy the after second that one. one. The second yeah. one, which Both is stand up too. The oh, first wait, one was rowdy, which is why the second one, everyone's like, this is, we went to the same place to film it. There was just like, like, aftermath was basically broken windows from beer cans being tossed through. There was, uh, the dirt whole entire front yard, dirt bikes through the house. Through the, yeah. house. the whole entire front yard was just like dirt bike, uh, pit, donuts. Like, donuts everywhere. Like it was just everyone, mayhem. Everyone was too comfortable with each other. Yeah, like, everyone was just like yeah. We're I here. mean, which is it part was of it. destructive. But honestly. It, like someone turned, everyone's <laughs> eyes rolled back, and <laughs> yeah. we're just sitting there like, what just happened? It was right demon now. zone after that. It is. It is challenging because I I have like this almost jealousy around people who are in their career at like a really early stage. Like I. Dude, I miss so much. Like, I miss, like, the thriving in the back of my freaking Toyota Tacoma. Yeah. Like, just eating, like, old tuna and, like, yeah. being at the beach, being like, I'm going to be there at first light. I'll drive four hours. Like, no worries. Yeah. I'm going to drive to Oceanside right now. It's, like, two in the morning. Yeah. Just that, like, amount of just nonsensical, like, decision-making. And nowadays, I feel like... That's the best time. It, dude, it's the sickest time. And it's funny because nowadays I have this jealousy on people who are in that beginning of their career because I'm like, man, like that's such a pure moment. Like when you, when you're just, you're just being around bunch you're just making, oh, yeah. you're, you know, you're making fun stuff with your friends. And, and the truth of the matter is like, yeah, like it, it gets rowdy. That's what happens. And yeah. now I'm like, I have to be so much more reserved Yeah. because you've got not even so much cause you like are trying to protect this image, but you're like, Oh God, like, you know, I've had situations where I'm like freaking, you know, alpacas are getting rogue like you know I'm, I'm i'm like looking on instagram or something like that and i'm like you know you you, you go to take a photo of, with, with somebody at like a, an event or a premiere yeah. and then some girl like grabs you and like gives you a kiss on the cheek and i'm like okay oh, like God. that's gonna look really shitty yeah. online yeah, and i'm sure. just like it, it forces you and i'm you know it's like the funniest thing to even say that but it forces you to be so like reserved and less like yeah. you just can't be as open a little more shell yeah, yeah exactly so you, yeah, that. you can make more mistakes <laughs> when you're funny. when you're like at the beginning, and that's when you learn and oh, all that stuff kind totally. of like comes to fruition. Totally, like, um, but dude, it's it is funny like there's some irony there to like the begin. I think there's some real truth to that. Like I, I get people who ask all the time. They're maybe in this position position in their life or career where they're like a little older and they they've got like a, a set a segmented career path, and they're like, I really want to change things. I really want to go and do what you do, and I don't sometimes have the heart to tell them I'm like you know you, you can but what but you won't because what it would require is you going taking a step backwards in terms of like comfort and security yeah. and even me I'm like dude I'm lazy or now than yeah. I was like I was not lazy you know like I've got other responsibilities and it's not even laziness it's just like there's a comfort level there's something you get used to and it's hard to go back yeah hard to go back to being like yeah man I'm gonna go back and just grind well you have to be young and you have to be like uh there's almost like this like age where it's okay to be unapologetically just like selfish and Dude, stuff you know? totally yeah so. and, I, and i feel for people also who are starting out where they're like they're like well how do i how do I find myself in my career how do i uh, how do i find my purpose how do i find my style and i'm like dude what are you worried about like do you really need to pick up a camera and be like, I'm an environmentalist now? Mm -hmm. Like, you need to have this definitive altruistic purpose. Like, yeah. isn't it enough just to like pick up a camera and go, go shoot photos because it's fun? Yeah. Like, just go make some mistakes. Go stay up late. Go freaking get whacked out on caffeine and like go shoot the stars and like have no purpose other than just to make something. Like yeah. that to me, I feel like that's even with the origins of a brand. Like you didn't start a brand being like, okay guys, here's our five year plan and we, yeah. we make these and then we go here and then yeah, we get funny. Yeah. people tell us like you need to do a five year plan. And we're like, okay. <laughs> and we're sitting there yeah, like yeah. five years from now, I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> what do we have? I don't understand how to do that. <laughs> it, is, it is hilarious. And you know what what else is funny is like I get asked that now. Like where do you want to be in ten years? That's like my least favorite question. Yeah. Don't don't ask it. Because <laughs> I'm just like, dude, like do you not real like I love what I do. Like, mm -hmm. This is it. This is the yeah. sickest thing ever. Like, it's dude, I'm kicking it in my backyard. Like, I spent the first five years of my career only thinking about tomorrow, only thinking about the next month, only because I was like, I have no money. I need a freaking you know, bank accounts, you know, dry, and I've got metal showing on my tires. And, and all I was thinking about was like, is this decision going to be okay for tomorrow? And now I'm like, all I want to do is live in this moment, mm -hmm. you know, and enjoy what, what this is. Yeah. It's really not 
photographers that are listening and taking advice. It's anybody who's starting a brand, right. anybody who's an ambassador, anybody yeah, who's yeah. an influencer, totally. anybody who's just traveling and mm. doing things. You know, mm. it's really not just photographers that take totally. advice. I totally agree. You could, they could learn a lot from just like how you built what you did. I just think that simplicity of like being young and not, it's it's like nowadays, you know, you, you go online and your 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 input is like so overwhelming. You know, you're supposed to care about everything that's going on in the mm-hmm. world when 10 years ago we like only knew about what was happening 20, 20 miles time. from us. Yeah. You're like, oh yeah, you know, yeah. Sally down at the market, you know, I don't right. know, she dropped her eggs. Like, you're yeah. like what? And now it's like, oh my God, the Amazon's burning down. Yeah. And holy cow, like I'm a piece of shit because of this and this and right. this. You know, you're like, it's funny that this is the world we live in and yes, we can react to all that. It's so great to form opinions and do the best you can. But remember that like we weren't built to, know everything. to care about everything like yeah. we we're built to to you know have a certain amount of friends and really care about a certain amount of things and yeah. i think that as creatives or as just people in general like it's nice to get back to that remember that sometimes like what defines us what do we what do we really like what makes moves our heart you know in some way and i think like putting your time and effort into that and that's like the raddest thing and i think that yeah. what you guys are doing in the brand speaks to that you know, no, like it, it speaks to like youthfulness and like you know you can see you, that yeah. the campaigns are like really thoughtful and and they highlight I think um, aspects of culture like Americana that are really yeah. like that are really honest and, and yeah. rad and you know that's pretty cool too. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I just took a big. you know I think I think you nailed it on the head though. You like you, you, when you when you simplify it, it's like a funny thing because you're like well. You know, if you just live the most simple existence that you can, then really all you have to offer somebody is your yeah. your, your story, is your you know, yeah. is your thoughts, is your your what you've experienced in life. I and think yeah. that's for our, all our marketing, really. And honestly, now that I'm thinking back on it, I don't know if it was Woo! intentional. Burn my foot. Oh, <laughs> I was worried about that. You guys are all barefoot over here, and I'm just, so just like, I'm just inch away from yeah. death right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. But nothing, nothing that we've done creatively, at least in the early days might have been out of necessity was really that product focused even like you mentioned the standoff ad was about the trunks kind of yeah but it's more so about the community or person yeah, or, yeah. you know whatever it is and, in our stuff and less so about the product which is maybe dumb as a clothing company <laughs> to do that yeah, in yeah, hindsight yeah. but that's kind of how we did it and i feel like dumbing down the clothes and worrying like you said less about what you're wearing and yeah. more so what's underneath but it's the so clothes. but it's so it's so to the point of what I think every photographer's dream is. And, 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 and from a creative standpoint, I'm like, I become interested in a brand when I see marketing where I'm like, well, I don't, I don't even know which piece of this is, is theirs or which yeah. piece of this is this old timers yeah. or whatever. It's yeah. like, but I want to know more about them because yeah. what I'm seeing speaks to me on like a, a, a really authentic level. And I'm intrigued. I'm like, I'm, I'm seeking out more information. I'll, I'll go on their website. I'll look at their stuff. I'll, I'll check that out. You know, it's like I'm, I'm drawn in because of, because of what they seemingly stand for or what they're trying to stand for, which yeah. is like, you know, something that's lost. Mm-hmm. That's the whole point, right? Yeah. I love that, you know? And on some level too, that's why we started going on trips mm-hmm. was because we could not only experience stuff, but we could test product mm. and half the time like we're wearing half of our product half not yeah, you know? yeah. but it's just about getting out there and learning more yeah. and that could make us create new products from yeah. that so yeah. like that's what started the brand was really going on trips and i think and sometimes it's like stuff. it's like a joke when you're like i'm head to toe and like what, what yeah, the brand where it's like yeah. that's not real like, yeah. yeah you you, you make stuff for a, a wide variety of people you know it's like does it is it going to be your favorite pair of pants you ever worn no like mm-hmm. those are sitting at home those are broken in since when you were like 12. Yeah, yeah like yeah, for sure. Absolutely. For that. Yeah. Is there, this is really random. I just hit my brain. Yeah. Through the ether. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to direct it's it. It's all you. smoke. Yeah, you're like, I know, it's all yeah, smoke. Like, you pass out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is there a, was there a trip that you think was your most memorable trip you went on? Because I feel like you go on a lot of trips, so that might be very hard. Yeah, I mean, there's, for different reasons, yes. Like, one of the most memorable trips was like, you know, I took my my kids and I got to like fly over these glacial rivers in Iceland with them and like seeing their 
and I flew over the volcano with them and like seeing their experience, like nowadays, so much of tr what gets me psyched is traveling and seeing it through their eyes. Sick. And that sounds kind of cliche almost because it's like, of course, like, yeah, but it, it truly like it's that's like the joy. But mm -hmm. so like there's those things that are more like these these like soul experiences. Yeah. And then there's been some trips where like, you know, from purely like an expedition standpoint, I'm like, we, we planned for so many years. We prepared and then all of a sudden you go and like getting what we got felt like, I don't know, we found the other side of the rainbow. Mm -hmm. Like the first time I went to the Aleutian Islands with Ben Wyland and Josh Mulcoy, Alex Gray, um, Pete DeVries, it was a, uh, a mind-blowing trip. Like I had no clue we were going to stumble upon what we stumbled upon. And we knew there was waves. Like we, we, we knew people had been, but nobody had gotten anything like we had gotten. And, yeah. and to go there and to be in a place where literally storms start the cradle of storms right it's like one of the most ferocious like absolutely just unruly places you could ever go the bearing seas on one side the pacifics on the other side it's a tundra no trees right at all just That's volcanoes so and landscape that is like so rough and rugged and uh do you mind to, me asking sorry who came up with the idea to go there so the, <laughs> I, yeah the idea to go there was really um it was really me and Ben Weiland. Like we we had we had talked about tons of places to go. We had looked at um, old surfer magazines, and there was a crew that went there like way no back, way, way back Somewhere when. And they got they got a couple waves. Um, they got a couple fun waves, and it looked rad and it looked beautiful. And then we went in a quite a bit later season, so there was bigger swell. There was it was just colder, harsher, and the whole hope was that we would see some new waves light up that they didn't yeah. get a chance to see and we went there and like i mean in the research we did months years prior like uh -huh. we didn't yeah. see anything like we saw like i was like dude this place is gonna be gray it's gonna be raining i'm like i read trip reports and people were like yeah i sat in the rain for a month and i was like are you kidding me like i was super worried we literally landed and the most beautiful biggest volcano i've most perfect volcano i've ever seen was just emerging from the middle of the island, Ooh, right? Wow. And I was like, we're, 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 we're landing this tiny plane on the runway that's a crashed plane right next to you that like, they just left there from like years prior. And all I remember is like the flight, like I swear to God, like my eyes were so glued to the window that like fog was just like coming up, like my mouth was just right there. I was just looking at the surf. Point break, reef break, beach break, point break, reef break, beach break, like one after another, just endless space. Bays that I've never gone to, bays that I probably will never go get to. But I did see all these surf spots that we eventually did go and score. And that trip was like mind blowing. What was mind blowing about it was that you do that research, you spend that time, you spend that money, you convince your editors again, you're putting yourself on the line. All of it's kind of on you. And when it boils down to it, you know, Ben and I worked hand in hand, but it was me. You know, I had to collect this money. I had to convince the, the magazine to send us there, you know, and, and to, um, to take that on was stressful and then to have a crew that was willing to go mm -hmm. felt amazing but at the same time there's like a there's a stress that comes with that too you know you want to like do right by these guys because yeah. you're like it'll be, it'll be it'll be worth it i promise you know it doesn't turn out it feels like you wasted their dude time yeah you know and yeah. it's like you go you go on a trip somewhere remote where you're like yeah okay we're gonna go buy you know two thousand dollars worth of food and shove it into freaking some like you know crates and then put on this plane and go somewhere remote and we're like we hope it's good. We hope yeah. it's worth it. We just like, you know, spend all our money and uh, and then we scored. And it was like, dude, it was it was insane. I mean, it was the most amazing trip. I'd say the photograph that I got from it, which was one of the most iconic in my career, Josh Mulcoy just doing this big turn, like kind of lip turn in front of this amazing volcano. That photo's rad and it, it really summarizes the experience. The like but, Surfer Magazine cover. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but, it, sick. but nothing comes close to just like, knowing that like the struggle of even just yeah. that coming to life like that yeah. felt like such a um again like a validation of like holy cow like these remote wild weird places are are worth going that there's good surf out there and, and even more so there's meaningful unique stories just like waiting to be told <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, meaning to be told and i think that's kind of rad you know that's like a cool part of it yeah i'll take this really cool moment you're looking out the window you're just frothing like no other dude oh yes. i mean it's it's hard to like it's hard to express i remember waking up 
it had been raining for like four days straight. Woo! I know, dude. Four days straight. Oh, now you guys are yeah. so strong. From it's my crazy, view, it's like dude. a dude. Just <laughs> over you. I remember being there and like we, we we had gotten good surf and then we were sitting there for like for like four days in a gnarly storm. I've never been in a storm that that severe in my life. Like the windows, we thought the windows were gonna break. Yeah. Um, it was like reverberating so hard, and all of a sudden the next day, crystal clear, like ice on the ground, just frost everywhere. And we're jumping on these quads. We can see from our window this massive volcano. It's it's like covered in white. And we're like, we need to get to the beach now. Yeah. You're putting on every layer you have. You have a 20 mile quad ride, and you're like ripping through tundra on these these tiny like you know double track roads that are basically just like rutted out, gnarly like mud piles. You get there and ride down this huge sand dune to the beach, and we're just like, oh my god, it's perfect. Yeah. It was just like you couldn't Crazy. take a bad photograph. And I think that's the funny thing. Like that speaks to me, to my personal photographic style, which isn't about like, you know, I don't know, like crossing all your T's and dotting all your I's. It's like being stubborn and willing enough to be the one who's just going to go. And yeah, you do all your planning, you research as much as you can, you prep, you prep, you prep. But then at the end of the day, like you, you just have to go. Well, you know what's crazy about that exact shot from that Surfer Magazine cover? Yeah is usually, and this is before I got into like the photography world, not that I'm a photographer, but like before Seeger, and s seeing that shot, that was like the first time I think I thought, wow, who's that photographer? That's sick that he got that shot. That's so you know sick. what I mean? Yeah. Like usually I'd look at it That's and be like, good for yeah. that surfer, he's yeah. he's killing it. Like the photographer's right, right. pretty background. Yeah, that yeah. was like a, like a momentum time for me to be like, damn, Christopher Carr, like sick shot, dude. Dude, like, that's, 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 that's good. That's yeah. epic, epic to hear. I mean, honestly, it, it still gives me chills yeah. thinking about it. There's been very few moments in my life when I like shot a photograph and I was like, that was special. Yeah. You know, and I remember shooting that photograph right. and being like, I'm afraid. Banger. I'm afraid to look at my camera yeah. <laughs> because like, did that just happen? Like, is that real? I was like, I didn't even want to, like, I didn't want to look at the screen because I was just like, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to keep shooting. Like, it happened, whatever. Yeah. I, I, I literally had, like, anxiety. That's like, crazy. I was like, is it in focus? Is everything? And it, it was. It was rad. I mean, it's so such, crazy. A, such a cool moment. Like, so after that trip, do you actually, like, log stuff where you're like, okay, this is why that trip worked well? Or do you just go home? Yeah, like, I mean, I, I do. Yeah, like, I think that's part of my process is, like, looking back being like, we made this plan. This is the research we did. Ben and I had an idea, a concept. We, we came, it was brought to life because of this. Like this is what made it successful. We went later in the season. We brought this gear. This made it work. Like we, we you know, brought, you know, X amount of cash. Like mm -hmm. just like little things. And, and it's funny because I would say like on a time scale, like the trips that I've done have gotten more successful because of that. You know, I've been back to the Aleutians. I went yeah. with... Um, another crew, we, we scored again. Like I've, I've been to Iceland 56 times. Like I've, I've gotten lucky. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, crazy. It's crazy. No, it doesn't. It just means that they hassle me at the border every time I go. Um, but I got an apartment there, and it's a place I love, and it's a place that I maybe someday I'll settle down. And but it's one of those things where like I've found, if anything, that like uh, my trips have become more successful because I've gotten more attuned to like the timing, the cadence, when to go, how to do it, how to yeah. make it more efficient, and. And I guess I'm not really a person who like prides myself on just going to new places. I think that traveling is super cool and it's like a drug. And if you just constantly go to new places, all you're doing is you're getting that, you know, dopamine hit. But then like, are you really setting down some like foundation and roots and relationships? And I think that's totally. what I miss is like, I love going back to places that mm -hmm. are meaningful, yeah. back to Alaska, yeah. back to the Faroes, back to Norway, seeing the people, like connecting with them, like forming a bond and that's yeah. i think that Being has uh, gone come a long way for me yeah absolutely yeah, we, we've talked about that too yeah like if you go somewhere for three days you're you're seeing it and you're more of a tourist and mm -hmm. just like getting a feel for it but if you go somewhere for 15 days or go back yeah more and more and more you actually really get to know it you totally do and could know like yeah. where to go and what to do and it's like and that experience you know the first time for me driving along the iceland south coast right i'm like 60 miles an hour, I got my camera out the window, I'm just taking pictures. I'm like, this is so sick, like, everything's cool, I'm so like, you're so jacked, you know? You're yeah. like, oh, and then day 10, you're just like, yeah, cool, waterfall sick. Yeah. yeah, like, I think that in some way you need to like, kind of, I don't know, like, get a little desensitized to it, so that the really special moments start to stand out, and you realize totally. that instead of just 
shooting everything and like spraying and praying, you know, you're like actually looking for meaningful moments. And I, I think that's, that's I've, I've tried to learn that better. I, if anything, if, if there's any skill that I like might possess, it's nowadays, it's like recognizing when a moment is really special and trying to shoot the crap out of it. Like I want to shoot every angle. I want to, I want to document it really well, but when it's not like you don't need to pull out the camera you, know, you yeah. just be there just be in it totally i i have a like not to get too deep but um, let's get deep yeah, uh, yeah we can get we can get deep but i mean you're kind of at like the pinnacle of a of a photographer's career right you you can God. you could pretty oh, much do you could pretty <laughs> no, like, you I'm pretty much could do like what you want to do as a photographer right but i'm just curious like you're still young you're 30 and six. six. Come on. Yeah, we all that was sick though. You're in your 30s. You're in your 30s. Bro, I just go. hit the tipping point. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just yeah. curious, like, what what do you want your legacy to be at the end of your career? So you're trying to ask that question of where do you want the to be 10 in 10 years? Bro. Not, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. I know what you mean. It's more like, like what's your legacy that yeah, you want to no, leave behind? You're more, you know? Yeah, I know. I fully what do you want to be known for? Yeah, I think I think that I... What's your escape plan? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, straight up, like, I'm going to probably move to Iceland yeah. as soon as my kids go to, go to college, Damn. but um, with my wife and just, like, live out our days, like, raising sheep or something. That's but a cool retirement. That'd be, that'd be sick. I can't have alpacas. I can't. There. Yeah, I tried. Wait, yeah, it's, wait, it's, it's cold. No, it's illegal. They, will, they, won't, uh, they won't import animals. They, they're very selective about what kind of animals wow. get into the country. That's cool. That's that's Iceland. I know. <laughs> but. What about zoos there? They don't have zoos? They, they have, like, one zoo. Zeus? Yeah. <laughs> it is it's it's too cold yeah okay but, sorry this is but no this sorry. is a good question um because i because i agree yeah, with you again. and it's funny because i know what you're saying it's more about like where what do you want to leave behind yeah not the 10 not years. so much like where yeah. do you want to be yeah what no, do you want to be known as yeah, yeah and i think that um i think that if anything I, I heard something years ago that really stuck with me and it was a photographer's quote basically saying like you know if you want to know what somebody you know what lo what they love, you know, it's, you look at what they fear losing most, right? And I think that if anything, I think a successful photographer or a successful creative, you know, is they're trying to create work that's hopefully going to be around a lot longer than they are. Mm. And I think that the more and more I look at it, that's the work I want to work on. I want to do projects that are, yeah, they're meant to be appreciated in this day and time, but maybe in 10 years they'll be more appreciated. Maybe in 20 years they'll be more appreciated. Maybe they'll appreciate with me, you know, and I think it's becoming harder and harder to do that because I think the world is just looking for like now, what's here, what's now. But when you submit yourself to like bigger projects, films or books or, or, or something media or something with substance, yeah. you know, that, that's kind of, I think what I've found in my career is this cadence of trying to do personal projects that are meaningful, that like, I guess, share what I care about, what I fear losing most. And then you know, the, the jobs that make money and the jobs that keep food on the table and the jobs that, you know, keep my employees, yeah. you know, paid and everything like that. But at the same time, like, if I, if I totally give myself just to, like, work and income, you lose a part of yourself. You lose a sense of who you are. And then at a certain point, you're like, well, I'm, I'm irrelevant. Mm. Right? I think the only way to stay relevant in some way is to continually push oneself to tell more meaningful stories. And I think that, um, I know I've said that, crap ton but like the truth of the matter is like when I made a film about my good friend Milo uh, you know indigenous photographer um, it's Navajo and you know the the kind of the cultural complexities of what his life has been like that that's a meaningful story that like might actually help somebody someday that's hopefully going to be around longer than myself like when I worked on this film Uner which was about a good friend of mine who's a single parent like raising a daughter and um, you know, in the complexities of, of his life and like trying to weave his passions and risk while also like, I mean, those are the stories that I really care about. And those are the hard ones to tell. Like they, they, yeah. they pull a piece of you out, you know, and you're, you're giving a sense of yourself to that. And I think that, um, those are the ones that I look towards knowing that like, hopefully it'll be relevant in 10 years because somebody's going to be going through that and somebody's still going to relate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's sick to go shoot somebody like highlining in front of a freaking the moon or it's cool to shoot somebody surfing into the northern lights so those are cool too those are rad moments and those might inspire but i think at a certain point you just want something more meaningful you want something more true to yourself and as we as we age and grow now that i'm like 36 and i'm over the hill <laughs> 
you know, I, I'm a dad. Like, I'm looking for ways to understand the complexities of what it means to be a dad. I'm yeah. looking for ways to understand the complexities of, like, being a good son and being, you know, husband and all these. So the stories evolve. The stories change. doesn't mean I don't want to shoot action sports. I mean, I literally just spent the last month in Iceland and Norway and Switzerland, like, doing just that. Yeah. And that will always be a part of my core DNA. Like, I will always seek out discomfort yeah and always seek out those remote environments and and champion them but for my own personal growth i think that i hope my legacy leaves more than just pretty pictures i, yeah. I guess in some way doing more um, for yourself yeah. that truly like defines who you are kind yeah of and i mean it's funny those opportunities they present themselves in weird ways i never thought i'd publish a children's book but like somebody came to me and was like hey this could be a cool idea do you want to do it and i was like sure i yeah. mean yeah I did it. It's been one of the most meaningful projects I've ever done, and especially with COVID, like having something that parents can use as a teaching tool was turned into a school curriculum. You know, I have parents all the time that like email me and they're like, I saw your book in the National Park store, Rocky Mountain National yeah, Park, and I cool. bought it. And I'm like, that's the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. And I guess just not being too, I think this is what I mean. And I said this early on, and maybe this is a good time to like circle back, but this idea of like sometimes we get so focused on the creative side of it that I know a lot of people who are like, well, this is my creative box and this is where I exist. Mm -hmm. And I can't stray away from that box because then I'm either selling out or I'm doing something different. And I'm like, dude, like all I want to do is evolve. Mm -hmm. All I want to do is like be some, do something different. Like yeah. I'm just looking for ways to access those opportunities. You ever gone on a never... trip and not brought a camera? Yes, a couple times. And that's the sickest, most fulfilling Sick. thing in the world. But it's still usually for work in some way. Oh. I feel like if you're gonna go to Egypt, like you're not just gonna go take a photo of the pyramids, you're gonna like find like the gnarliest little like hidden gonna, thing that no one's ever seen like, before. I'm gonna like <laughs> paraglide over and then yeah. like drop yeah. in and like steal the decoration. Yeah. Of the <laughs> yeah. 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 It's there, it's there. It's where the real one's hidden, dude. Yeah. Never seen a national treasure, man? Yeah. It's not the real one. Yeah. There. Damn, it's blew my mind. <laughs> The yeah. new National Treasure is coming out, so... Dude, I'm pretty psyched. Brendan Fraser. Yeah. yeah. Might be about Egypt. You're just yeah. making a, a cameo on that. Yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. Yeah. No, but for real, like, thank you for being an inspiration. Dude. And and also just, first of all, given, like, so many of our friends' jobs and being able to build their careers, like, all yeah. of our closest friends, like, it's pretty insane what they're doing. And it's some of it's thanks to you. Dude, and, um, straight up, some of the cool, best people I know, best yeah. relationships I always laugh because like those people I work with like I spend like just so much time with them on the road like so much intimate time and to get to know some of those people has been like it's the most valuable thing I mean that's like why we do what we do because we, yeah. yeah. we get to spend time with unique personalities and people and learn from them and absorb them and that's that's rad and I mean this has been sick it's been rad I've, I've done a lot of podcasts I've done a lot of you know fireside chats with no <laughs> fires and this is legit and i freaking i yeah. respect it and i really appreciate what you guys are doing thank you as yeah. a brand it's awesome thanks for having us here heck yeah yeah really taking alpaca it. home yeah yeah okay <laughs> <Sure. Yeah. laughs> that's twice. That's it. Down. Yeah. Cool. yeah thanks to you and your family for having us and yeah no worries. And being so cool how do we sign off we just blue dart this thing and like yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right peace <laughs> <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Coors Banquet. No, 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 thank you. It's so hard to be happy. Holy crap. Oh, it's just like air. It's a mess to take you out there. Just a globe over here.